The EXT Storia V3 is an ancient shock, especially in mountain bike standards, like six years old. So right when I got it, boom, this came out. And I was like, damn it, now I gotta get one of these. Anyway, the main difference between the V3 and the V4 I'm going to discuss in the front part of this video, and it's an excellent time to pick up a V3 because they're going to be heavily devalued or on clearance because they're definitely discontinued. So I almost paused production of this video, but I realized there wasn't really a super in-depth video on this shock. There's only like four or five videos and they're kind of surface level. So let's go deep on this guy and see if this archeological dinosaur can hold its own six years later. First thing you should know about EXT, they overbuild the crap out of their shocks. We have a heavily reinforced eyelet making this safe on most or all specialized bikes according to EXT. It features a 14 millimeter aluminum stanchion. Yes, steel would be better, but because of this reinforced eyelet, it does make it okay to ride it on a yoked bike. One improvement for the V4, we have a chromoly reinforced steel shaft. The story of V3 features 10 clicks of low speed rebound, not the hugest range in rebound. And it's a little bit finicky to use the knob, especially when there's a coil spring on it. The range of it is pretty small. And it also doesn't say slower and faster. It says plus and minus, so plus is slower plus is slower a little bit hard to wrap your head around it but if you think about the rebound piston adding plus closes the oil flow off making it a slower rebound i don't have the v4 in my hand but the rebound adjuster does look like it has changed and hopefully it's improved because it's a little bit tricky to move when you have some gloves on this ancient fossil features hydraulic bottom out long before any mountain bike brand even knew what that word meant so it has a super small bottom out bumper because the oil flow is stopping the bottom out. This old dinosaur, the hydraulic bottom out is preset from the factory or the service center. They told me they could crank it up during a service. On the picture of the V4, we can see an extra bulge on the top of the shock. This is so you can externally adjust the hydraulic bottom out control. The V3 features 14 clicks of low speed rebound. It's a massive range and don't downplay it because you might need it for the next video. One bummer of the V3 is the high speed compression adjuster. You have to use a 12 millimeter open end wrench, which is an absolute pain in the ass because you have to carry a wrench around or their special little tool. It does make a super cool pop. One great improvement for the V4, it looks like we got a five millimeter Allen key to adjust the high speed compression. Now these are kind of small potato adjustments except for the hydraulic bottom out. I do want a V4 external hydraulic bottom out is awesome to have. But let's talk about the real change in potatoes. So we are looking at the damper flow of the V3. If you check out the piggyback, it features an IFP sliding up and down. Now IFP is basically like a piston and it has a whole bunch of friction and 99% of shocks on the market have this. Reading through the technical documents about the V4, this is the real improvement. All EXT shocks now only come with this. Instead of that sliding up and down high friction IFP, they feature a bladder. In this video, I'll tell you the pros and cons of basically both. So let's do a small bump sensitivity check on the V3 with an IFP. Now this is an EXT V3S, basically Estoria internals with the bladder inside of the piggyback. It is incredibly more small bump compliant and sensitive to rider input. With any high level suspension, it takes some work to get set up. Now EXT does tailor their whole thing to setting up shim stacks and clickers for you. But if you buy it used or you don't like the way it rides, it does take some information, knowledge, and patience to get this stuff riding good. This goes for any high level suspension. 
I may have figured out the secret setup for all mid-level and upper tier shocks, but that will be in probably the next video. Now taking a look at that V3, it is definitely a good looking shock. It has a super unique finish. It definitely stands out and goes with virtually any color of bike. Let me take you on this epic all day backcountry adventure on this ancient fossil we like to call the V3 Astoria. Don't let that ancient six year old age fool you. This is world class damping, but that does come with the compromise of you needing to do some tweaks on the trail. I'm gonna guess a couple rebound adjustments and definitely playing with the compression. But you need to know the most important adjustment on any EXT coil and I rode all of them and had mixed success. It is the spring rate. On this ride, I forgot the 12 millimeter spanner so I have the high speed compression in the wide open setting. I can only adjust the low speed and I don't have a spring dex on it. I have an EXT 600 pound coil. So I'm basically stuck with a pretty heavy spring for my weight. I'm usually like 570. So carrying on on these normal cross country trails, to be honest, there's no benefit if you're just casually riding on bougie suspension. When things get chunky or high speed, that's when these bougie coils, we're gonna call them dampers, really come to life. It sounds like absolute chaos under you. You have to know that high-end suspension does make a lot of noise. EXT shocks, they're all kind of similar when you put them into this high load high work environment. They just sustain more hits than your normal style damper. It's an unexplainable feeling. It's like it has artificial intelligence and it just hangs out in the perfect mid stroke sustaining absolutely every rock root and bump. And it's an unexplainable feeling to be honest. But I did find a way to explain it and basically EXT calls it high turbulent flow valves. I've experienced this in the new Grip X damper from Fox. What it feels like, the oil is not moving back and forth. It's moving around in a violent circle that gives you an excellent ride. While the damper's performance was absolutely legendary during that savage riverbed descent, the whole package of the shock is not working in harmony. And there's one secret you need to know about this shock. If you bought too heavy of an EXT coil, you're never going to get the right performance. So that's why I still tell you to get a spring dex, even for these bougie coils, because this way we can drop the spring rate way down. You have to understand how bougie dampers work. They do so much work. The spring doesn't have to do as much work. So I normally ride like a 570 to 600 pound spring on a normal shock. On EXT, I'm 550 and that's how I get the magic feel. So another thing to note, EXT coils and Olin's coils, these stubby little coils, will give you more performance. They're lighter and they have more small bump sensitivity. I've done back to back tests on Olin's and EXT and these stubby coils are the way to go. The V3 Astoria is a dinosaur, and so are IFPs, so EXT doesn't make them anymore. We can only get a bladder shock from EXT unless you buy an old one or a used one like me. So after a week on the V3 Astoria, I honestly think the IFP style shock rides better at absolute high speeds when you're trying to pin it. Now the bladder gives you the most insane control over your rear wheel. It will turn you into a trials rider and I definitely prefer the bladder, but for the right price, I'm definitely on the IFP. But during the last couple rides out of sheer laziness, I discovered the absolute secret for suspension setup success. So you have to click this video on your screen no matter what shock you ride. 